Hi, my name is Jennifer Fairbanks and I am the owner of Porcelain. Um, and today I'm actually going to be showing you how to do a fit sample for the new Willowdale bra by Cashmereet. So I'm going to show you this sample I made, and I know this is a small sample, um, but it was easy enough to actually film. So this sample has some things that you wouldn't actually have on the finished bra. First of all, you can see that I've safety pinned the straps. Um, but another important thing that I've done is I've actually made it so the cups were inserted after we did the channeling. This way you can make sure that everything fits correctly. So we can make different fit assessments on the band um, as well as the cup. And this is easy enough that you can actually switch the cups out if we need to make modifications to the actual cup. The band is also done in two parts. So it's done in left and right. And at the very end, right before we actually put it all together, we then determine how wide the bridge needs to be because the spacing of most ready to wear bras is about three quarters of an inch and not all bodies are created with that space. So when I demonstrate what we do the two sides separately and then we discuss how to actually figure out what the spacing is between the breasts that you need. Um, and then we tack down the top and then we leave it to try on and then close the center bridge to make sure that we don't need to open it up for a flared rib cage. So when we approach the fit on the bra, we tackle it in several different aspects. You want to make sure that the band is fitting well um, around the rib cage, around the bridge, um, and you also want to make sure that the cups are fitting well. And so when you do a fit sample with kind of in bits and pieces, you can actually take and it's easier for you to modify the pattern and go back and change something. And if this fits you perfect, just as is, I suppose you can wear this, um, but this is also gonna be your learning sample. So if you've actually never made a bra before, this will really kind of help you hone in on your skills on how to sew with quarter inch seam allowances um, and how to work with really slippery fabric. So when making a fit sample, um, we don't really want to use our good materials quite yet because um, you never know if there needs some adjustments for your body. And since you're doing this for yourself, you might as well make this as customized as possible. So we're going to first cut the trico so we can kind of do our fit sample. So the pattern pieces we're going to need for that is this one. Let's see this one. Where'd my cut pattern go? Okay. So the top cup it uses a lace and this uses a power net. So these two we're gonna set aside. And so we're gonna cut these four patterns. Now you'll notice I'm using a smaller size. Um, I'm actually using one for my sister. So it's, um, it, it'll be easier for you to see rather me do one for myself um, and I'd be using all of the fabric. Okay, so for when I do a fit sample, um, I actually like to add a little extra to my center front and assemble my left and right of the bra separately so I can make sure that I can kind of get that fit right around the, the waist of the band done correctly. So in lieu of doing this on the fold for your first sample, uh, I'm actually gonna cut two of them. Now, because I'm on a smaller size, um, I can just double my fabric, kind of fold it over and cut them at the same time. If you are, um, using a larger size, you're going to want to be really strategic with how you place your pieces. And sometimes it's not always exactly what the layout shows. So you want to kind of see what you can fit where. Um, and we want to use as little amount of fabric as possible. Um, so we like to kind of start at one end. So if you notice here, you'll see dogs. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be lining up the dogs going from, this is the selvage, the finished edge, in which the dogs means the um, direction of greatest stretch. So there is stretch here. So I'm gonna try and get as close as I can over here. And then we have, let's see, the dogs goes this way here. So let's see what we can get and nest them. Oop, I wanna add, I wanna give myself that two inches here. So actually I'm gonna start with this over here so I, have a little bit to start with. I said, I like just extra, and the reason I do this is because um, sometimes some people's rib cages are a little bit flared, and if they're a little flared, we actually may need to increase the bottom down here, which I have to do. I actually have to add like three quarters of an inch on the fold um, for myself. So this is just one way that we're gonna start this. I'm gonna use a non-stretch lining 
to line the band itself. So because I'm doing that, um, it doesn't really matter which direction this one's gonna be for this. Now, if you're gonna be using this, um, your Trico for um, both directions, like so for your lining and yourself, then for yourself, you're gonna do it in this direction. But if you're using the non-stretch, you can actually do this in any direction because this is gonna stabilize it so nothing's gonna move. So I'll go um, for what the instructions are. So dogs for main, we'll set that there. Um, okay, dogs for main. And for main. And for main, okay. So you can see we can get a good nest of patterns in here. And if you're really careful, you can probably even get, let's see if we can do that better. Ah, that's even better. So we can use very little fabric or as little amount of fabric as possible. And so you wanna make sure that, that, that this line goes perpendicular to your selvage over here. Um, so for those of you that are very experienced in um, using a rotary blade, you can go ahead and cut these with the rotary. Um, the one thing you're gonna to wanna to do for the fitting is we're gonna add just a little bit extra here. So you can use pattern weights, you can use pins. Um, pattern weights are always handy, although if you have giant pattern weights like this, um, it could actually cause, uh, affect how it's moving. So I'm going to, I think I got that down flat. I'm gonna start over here and I'm gonna add just, like I said, I'm gonna come over here and about two inches right there. You're like, well, that's really crazy looking. Yes, it is. But this will give us a little of that extra ability to um, to test the fit. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda take this angle and keep going up. So. And I'm gonna just move these. I know that I can squeeze these back in here. take this all the way across and you're like well that looks crazy over here yes this is absolutely crazy over on this one so I'm just gonna keep a pin hold that one together so we can get ready to cut the other one this one I can come in here address all these little notches in just a moment. Okay, and then this actually I can probably come down here and do this down here. careful when you're pinning this because the fabric is kind of slippery so I would say if you can get some sort of weight now um, sometimes you can do something as simple as getting some canned 
food out of the cupboard. Um, tuna cans work really well because they have the low profile and they make a nice little weight. So I have one of each of these. Okay, and most of the, these fabrics do have a right side and a wrong side. So if we wanna make sure we're doing the opposite, so when we do the second piece, let's start with this one, we can actually just kind of set it on top like this. And that way we cut out each side. So if I line this up, okay, where is it? Or you can flip your fabric over and do it the other direction. So that is in that direction. Just use the weight. We can get that pattern piece. I should have thought a little bit more strategically. Let's see. No, I won't be able to fit that one in there. So I, I should have thought a little bit better about how I was going to do that piece. So if you actually print out two copies of your pattern, then you can kind of really play around with how you're going to nest them together. especially if you're using one of the larger cups, you're gonna really have to be careful with your usage of fabric. And so I really wanted to use the fabric as the guide, so I could have just taken the fabric off and laid the fabric on there, but I wanted to make sure that I had the same amount of extra on here for that bridge. So this one is all ready to, um, uh, for the outer layer and then you're going to do the same for everything else. I'm going to set this one aside and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get my stable piece out and this is really the only piece you, you can actually stabilize any of the cut pieces that you want um, but note that it will affect the fit if you don't do this on the final fabric. So what we can do is we can take and fold this. And if you end up needing a lot, have a much larger size, um, you can honestly kind of nest one this direction, get the other one in this direction. So you have a little bit of room to play on here. Um, and even if you don't even have enough of this fabric, um, what you could do is you can actually just cut a little stable piece in the front, but we'll not, we won't get into that one. So we're just gonna take, we're gonna double this. I'm gonna conserve my fabric, and I'm gonna line this right up on top of it. So I can save a little bit more fabric. and I'm gonna use my actual cut piece to cut this out. I said, if you need a larger one, please cut them separately.
So now I'm going to show you my secret weapon, a glue stick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, just for this fitting, um, I'm going to glue these two pieces together. Um, it'll make our lives easier. When you're dealing with the actual sew along, the, the, the full one, um, we're, we're not going to glue this one to this yet because um, we need to clean finish the top of it. So what we can do is we can put strategic glue. And just to note, these things do dry out quite quickly. So if you have, so I kind of just dot, dab it in several places. Um, it will get go through because this is kind of like a screen. So it'll stick to your table. So you just have to clean your table up afterwards and store these in a plastic baggie. Okay, right and wrong. Let's see, I think this is my right. So I, it might be hard to see the, the fabric underneath. But and then just take a second, kind of, oh, that one's not quite on there. And the reason why I added it to the non-stretch part is that it won't stretch the fabric out. If you did that on the fabric, it could kind of distort the fabric a little bit. Okay, where's the other piece I had? Is that it right here? This is it right here. So kind of carefully line them up. Get my side. And there we go. Our band is mostly prepped. Let's see. You may need to kind of come in here and just kind of even them up a little bit. Um, and this will just make handling these different layers easy. And you can get these for, I think, like 10 for a dollar or something. Okay. So once we've got those, kind of want to give them a little bit of a a little bit of a rest so it can dry um, and definitely wash your hands I noticed when I started sewing after this when my hands got a little bit of wet um, the glue kind of reactivated it um, so we've got these parts ready um, so we can set these ones aside let them dry um, and then you can finish cutting assume I've already cut the other piece of this one the other piece of this one and the other piece of this one and um, I'm going to do that off screen, but I wanted to show you this part first. Okay, so set that to the side. And then we've got our band. So we have our band here, and you can see stretch here and stretch here. Stretch everywhere. And this one really has almost the same stretch this way. So I'm actually going to do my cuts. I'm going to cut two in this direction. You can kind of see the edges are curling a little bit. Um, the lines look like they're going across a little bit more. And I cut the selvages off because sometimes um, power nets behave a little bit differently depending on how they're made. So for this one, I'm just going to double this up. Of course, if you've got a much larger one, you probably want to cut each one individually. But we only need to cut two. So cut one for left and one for right. And so this one, I'm going to line up here. I will actually use the pins. They like to stick in this fabric. So now we've now I'm going to use this lace. Uh, this isn't the one I'm going to do in the actual tutorial, but we'll be able to to see where is that top cut pattern. So we can take this, and what we want to do is we want to line up kind of the tip. So I like to come to the widest part of the scallop. So you can kind of take that edge up to the top part of the scallop. 
so I've got glue on my fingers, and then you pivot this to where the top edge of this point also hits a scallop. Um, it doesn't matter if it's the highest scallop, we want to start on the power bar edge at the, the highest and then go to kind of rotate like that. So I'm going to take and cut. And then what I like to do is actually take this fabric, flip it over, and we want to match up the scallop perfectly. So we can do this on the same side, on the opposite side. We'll be able to utilize a lot of this fabric. I'm just, I'm lining this up so the outside edge of the scallops fit, line up perfectly. That way we'll have a symmetrical looking cut. And you saw I flipped it over as well, so that way we, we are, both sides are going to have the correct side of the lace. There we go. Okay, and here is my top cup. And it is in this direction. So this is a tiny cup. Now that I've cut all of my outer layer pieces, then we can go in and we want to start tackling the lining. Now you can use the self fabric, um, which some kits have enough of um, to do that. But um, what I actually like to do is I like to do a lining fabric because it helps me realize what is what. So it's a little bit on the sheer side. Um, and in the kits that um, I have sent out, there's actually two pieces of this. So if you've got your two pieces, make sure that you've kind of got the stretch lined up the same. And the stretch is the same kind of direction of stretch that the Trico has. So since these ones don't necessarily have selvages on them, I'm gonna line these up right on top of each other. That way I can cut both at the same time. And there is, if you really feel at it, there's kind of a right and a wrong side, but I can never figure it out once I actually have them on. Um, because they're both pretty soft, so I'm, I'm not worried about that. And so here, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do these in the opposite direction. So the dogs are in the opposite direction. So we can do it like this. And lining. So we actually are not going to be using a lot of this fabric. Um, so if you do have the two pieces and you have a smaller cup, you can certainly just use one of the pieces. Um, I think I'm going to do that just for the sake of saving fabric. So still pretend you've got the two layers on top of each other. Okay, then lining. We'll go in that direction. And you'll notice I'm not being 100% really, really careful with how I am um, lining them up. I'm being as close as possible. Um, but I am the least accurate sewer, and I've been sewing my whole life. Um, I figure that everything has room for error, and we are no exception. So go ahead and just kind of get them where, about where they are. We're not teaching sewing, so it's not, you know, a tiny little bit of a shift isn't going to be too terrible. Like I'm talking like an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. But I'm just going to come in here and try and hold the paper down. I don't like using a lot of pins with this because the pins do shift the fabric around. And this way we'll make sure that the cups will be stable enough. Now something I'm not going to do is I'm not going to cut lace for the entire bra. Um, there's no reason to use all that lace for your initial fit sample. We will do that for the actual finished sew along. Okay, there's 
use those two pieces. But if you are working in a much larger size, I'd recommend even getting two kits um, or just get the extra, extra yard of lining um, just so you have that to play around with. Because um, you don't really want to, you don't want to be using your good kit. Oh, I just, it, my table's still sticky, <laughs> so things are moving still. So I'm doing the opposite of what I said, which is clean your table after using that glue stick. Okay, and then I just need to chop off the end on this one. Okay, so now I have all four pieces for my power bar. I have all four pieces of this one, and I actually didn't accidentally did not cut one in the correct direction, but this is a fit sample, so this is where we get to make mistakes. And then we have all four pieces for here. Um, and then we have these fully stabilized, so you can see I'm tugging them, they're gonna be fine. So once you have everything cut and prepped, oh, and then my lace over here, then we can begin assembling your first bra. Now, if you have never done this before, um, you may end up having to do this process twice. Um, the first time you sew a bra is likely going to be a complete disaster. Even if you are very, very experienced, um, it is a completely different method to sewing than you're probably used to. The seam allowances are very small. You can see that they're only a quarter of an inch or about six, six millimeters wide. Um, so we have to be really careful that we're kind of cutting everything okay. So to begin working on the fitting portion, we actually need to do the band, construct most of the band first. So with the regular construction, we're actually gonna be clean finishing the top here between the two layers. Here we glued them together just to do the fit. So I'm gonna take my back and then we actually need to attach the side. So we're gonna just pin these together on our sides. So with the right sides together, this doesn't really have a right and a wrong side. So this doesn't really, this side doesn't really make a difference, but this one will. So. Can't pin from that angle. And then your seam allowance on this side is a quarter of an inch. Now, um, that is about six millimeters. On some of the sewing machines, the foot is actually a quarter of an inch wide. On others, it might be three eighths of an inch wide. So you need to be careful and kind of quick measure. So you can use the edge of your foot as the guide when you're actually sewing this. So I'm gonna be showing you a short little clip um, that I'm actually gonna be wearing a GoPro on my chest, so it might be a little bit bumpy but it's the best way um, to show you on a home machine, which is I have in the other room. So we're gonna be using my daughter's sewing machine because this is a home machine, so it'll be a little bit easier to show. We're gonna be doing most of our stitches with the straight stitch, although when we attach the elastics, we'll be using the zigzag, and I'll show you kind of what I use. Um, so this foot is actually a quarter of an inch from where the needle is to the edge. So for my foot, I can use this as my guide. Now, you'll notice, and if you haven't sewn this type of fabric before, um, it can actually cut, get really, it can get eaten by the machine. So what I always like to do is I like to start sewing something else first. And that way, we don't have to actually start stitching right on the edge of our pattern piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna stitch this Plus it'll help me realize, make sure that I've got the stitch in the correct length and everything else. And I'm doing black thread so you can see. And then I'm gonna get it over here and then I'm just going to get this under, kind of giving a nice little gap, and then I'm gonna start sewing. Now you can certainly do a back stitch right now. We're gonna be doing a, this is a fit sample, 
and we're going to need to paint elastic at the top and at the bottom. So we are going to be reinforcing these seams. So at this point, you don't necessarily need to do a back stitch, um, especially if your machine is prone to eating your fabric. So I'm just going to keep going and go right along. I didn't cut very straight, so I am just going to be even up my cutting, cutting with my sewing. Okay, and then since I've already got something in the machine, excuse me, um, I can actually just pick right up, kind of take that off the edge, pull that foot up, and then continue. So I, I'm not giving the machine enough time to, um, to eat the ends, if you want to call it that. So we can evaluate. Let's see, I've got a bleed on here, don't I? Yeah, I don't. So it didn't eat it at, at either the top or the bottom. So this looks good. I'm going to go ahead and snip my fabric apart and I'm going to grab my um, band elastic because I'm going to do the band elastic first. So this is a band elastic. This is actually just one I had sitting on my table. Um, and this isn't even really the, this isn't one of the ones that are in the kit. It's just one I have laying around. Um, this one is the half an inch. So um, I'm doing this, um, which would be the, the correct size for the smaller. My daughter's sewing room doesn't always have everything in here. Okay, so I got that put aside. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually wanting to put a zigzag stitch on here. So I like to do, so on here, you can see, and your machines may be a little different, um, you want to have an average stitch length. So I like to keep mine at about 10 to 12. Um, this machine I've kind of, I've done a little bit of modification, so the 12 is actually kind of small, so I keep a little bit right below the 12. Um, and then we're going to do the width. Um, we can actually do, do even the full width of the elastic. Um, I don't think we need that, so I'm actually going to do about two, halfway between two and three. So, the trick that I like to do, and so actually how the elastic is going to be attached, is it's going to be attached on the right side of the fabric. So when we flip it, it'll be flipped to the wrong side. And we also need to be aware of which side we want to have flipped to the inside. So you want to have the brushed side facing up on the right side. So it's going to come in through like this. So I'm going to put this in my machine. I'm going to set it in here and I'm going to just go ahead and get it, get the zigzag started. And this way we can kind of see, oh, do we need to make any adjustments? Okay, that's a good width of, width of it. Try and get it in a good position. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to line this up, kind of sl slide it right underneath the edge of this elastic and then line it up to the bottom, and then let it go. Now I am not pulling this elastic at all. I'm just letting it sit, go straight. I'm just lining it up to the bottom. So we do have a little bit of an angle here. So when we get about to this point, we just want to kind of slowly kind of squeeze and adjust around the band shape. You can kind of see, I'm trying to put the camera a little higher. That's important, we don't, and, and this is your fit sample, so you can play around with kind of controlling the elastic. And don't worry too much about where you're stitching on it, because we're going to be flipping it so you have the little decorative edge when you're done. Now that I just showed you one piece, and I'm going to show you how you really should be doing it. <laughs> so, um, when we're on here and we get this lined up, when we're stitching, we actually want to be stitching as close to the pico, but not over this little pico edge. So that way it'll be nice and easy to turn. Um, and we want to be very consistent with how we are doing this. So I'm just kind of finding, focusing, kind of finding a point on my 
on my elastic that I'm looking at through the needle. I know it's a little tricky, but I take it slow. No need to rush on this. side seam, or then we can take and kind of force it back. So this is pretty much how you're going to be doing it for the rest of the bra as well. Um, I'm actually just going to still, I'm not going to cut anything apart, I'm just going to come back over here. Now we're going to take and we're going to fold this back and we're gonna do this zigzag stitch again. Now I'm actually feeling here that I think my tension's off a little bit. It feels like my top is not tight enough, so I'm gonna tighten my top a little bit. So when I do the second row of stitches, which I fold it under, and then I'm going to zigzag on the edge. So when I fold and, and zigzag this, and I just... So if your machine's anything like mine, it will kind of pull the stitch back out, so make sure you give yourself a little tail. And then I want to take and I'm going to fold this. And also you can kind of guide in, kind of um, coax your fabric to lay where you want it to lay in here. And this is the stitch that will be visible. So you can kind of roll it out with your finger. We're just gonna double check it's all done oops get caught and this is pretty much done at this point I'm gonna go and sit back at the table and show you what the next step is so before we move on to making the cup let's discuss about the band so we know that this is there's a lot of extra stuff right here and we're gonna get rid of this but we want to kind of fit, do a few more things first there is a chance that once you sew the cup together, you may need to tweak the cup a little bit. So maybe you need to go down a size or maybe you need to kind of narrow it a little bit, um, but you won't know until you actually sew the cup. So if, you're wanna make, if you wanna make this whole process easy, um, so you can go in and modify the cup and then come back and change it into the band so we don't have to start from scratch again and do the band again, we can actually kind of skip a little step and we can put in, we can go ahead and attach the underwire casing to the band itself. Now this is not what you would do on the finished garment because if you do, did this on the finished garment, you wouldn't have a clean finish around your wire line. So the wire line itself, we have at one quarter of an inch seam allowance. So what we wanna do is we want to take our casing and we wanna sew it around with that quarter of an inch all the way around just on the band itself. And so you may need to strategically pin this or if you're really good at, at, at marking it, you can do it that way. So this casing has a slight curve to it and I believe all the ones in the kits we provided um, do have a bit of a curve to it. So double check the casing, it'll be a lot easier if it's curved. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sew the casing on to the wire line um, for the band. So I will show you that at the machine. 
Okay, so we do have a right and a wrong side of the casing. The really brushed side that is the right side, that's the side you want against your skin. So we were gonna put the other side towards the band. And just like I showed you how we started sewing on the elastic first, I'm gonna do the same thing. Make sure you turn off your zigzags. And I'm gonna start stitching on my casing just so I make sure that I've got it attached. So then I can take and line this up. Okay, so we know we've got that quarter of an inch right there. And so you can use this as your guide, use your, your foot. And if anything, you can do it just a little bit to this way of that quarter of an inch. Again, I do apologize if it bounces a little, a little bit. I'm wearing this thing on me. And I'm sewing right on the edge. If you don't sew right on the edge, then you could it could become an issue when you're trying to um, get your wire in there. Oops, not turning fast enough. Okay, so get my thread long again, and then I'm going to go around and do a second row of stitching on the other side of this. And this may overlap or they may butt depending on how you sew them. Okay, so I'm going to do this to the other side of the band as well. Um, and I don't need to show it to you again, so um, I will be back with that completed. Okay, now that I've got my band prepped, I'm gonna go and just go ahead and I'm gonna trim off some stuff. So this bra is not gonna be one that you will ever wear because like I said, it's for fitting. <clears throat> I'm gonna trim up the ends just to kind of make things a little bit neater and less messy looking. And then we can set this to the side because we're not gonna we're not gonna attach anything to this until we've got the cut made. So let's go ahead and clean that. Okay, so now we are going to begin working on the cup. So we can set the power bar to the side. We're not doing that one yet. So I will set that there. Oops, make a mess over here. <clears throat> and to find where all my pattern pieces are. Okay, so the, the best thing to do at this point is to align your pattern pieces. And that's so you have a right and a left. So we know, we can lay this up so we know, okay, what goes where. Um, let's see, upper under wire edge, this one comes down here so we can match up the, the notches as well. Now you notice I probably, I didn't do any notches. Um, I usually, don't because I make sure when I'm sewing that I have enough space to spread this out. So with this in mind, I'm going to put one side of the lining here. And then we've got and it looks like that's the correct up. But remember this one I actually cut wrong on one side. Or maybe I didn't. It looks correct. Okay. And then we've got our cup here and our cup there. 
So once you kind of get things lined up, so you have right and left, then we're gonna work on assembly. So I set these down. So these two pieces we're going to put with the right sides together. And I may have just flipped that. I can't really tell right this second. And we're gonna line up our edges. And you can line up your notch. If you do the notch, just do a tiny little snip. All the pieces should line up correctly. So really the notches are there to help you make sure that you are attaching pieces to the right pieces. Okay, so we have this piece here. And so we have started by doing it this way. Well, for this side, we're actually going to flip them and pin the other direction. Because we want to have a clean finish in here. So it makes sense to do both the lining and the self at the same time. So we keep everything, everything in the right place. Hey, Emily, can you do me a favor? I think I left the pin cushion in your sewing room. Can you go grab that for me? Thank you. And so because these pieces, this is really just a fit, but you wanna get your process down to know what you're doing um, correctly or incorrectly. So we wanna make sure we don't have two left cups or two right cups. And if you do, well, you'll have to test the fit with one inside out. But this way it'll help you kind of come up with a process that works for you when you're actually pinning things together. But it's really, really important to have a right and a left. Um, and if on this, um, this sample, what you can even do is you could just write on them. Since this is not one you're ever going to wear, you can write which is the you know, up and down, you can mark the notches with a pen. Um, this is really for you to just confirm that you don't need to make any other changes because, so we've got that one, they look like opposites. So I know I did those two correctly. And so this has the square piece on top. So if I do it like this, then that will be correct. And so I'm just lining up the edges. Okay, now I'm going to take these four pieces and I'm going to sew these on my sewing machine and then come back so we can attach the top cups to them. And I just realized because I used the two different sides of the lace, one side has more detail than the other so I'm going to recut this one because I kind of like how detailed that one is. The band may have sewn a little bit differently because we stabilized it. This one is just the thinner fabric. So for here, if we were to start the needle right in the end, I can guarantee you that this sewing machine is going to eat it. Um, this machine certainly definitely likes to eat fabric. So you can, I always like to start with the fabric again. So start anywhere on here just to double check that it is sewing correctly, that you've got the correct stitch on, and the seam allowance on this is a quarter of an inch. So once I get to the end, then I like to then pop this under and now you can also use a piece of tissue paper um, if you have a hard time controlling fabrics um, because that could be, that could happen. Um, because it is a little slippery and I, you know, I've been sewing for years so sometimes I can make things a little bit, get things a little bit easier. So I'm just going to use the edge of my foot as my guide. Not sew over my pins. a little bit but okay when that one's done I'm gonna just grab the next piece that I need to do so get it under there
Oh, so I got something might be nice. Might not be feeding equal. I think it is. But the tissue paper will help it feed evenly if your machine has a tendency to to pull the bottom faster than the than the top, which some machines do. I've been sewing on this machine since I was about five years old. And then I gave this to my daughter about five years ago. Okay, we have one more piece to go. I'm just going to give myself a nice long tail in case we have any puckering of the seams. So what I'll do is I'll take and I kind of get that, pull that stitch just a little bit. So I had a little bit of pulling on there. Okay, so I just pressed my seams open and I use my bra ham. Um, and this is actually a free pattern that I have on my website, so it's really handy. You can fill it with, um, you know, rice, beans, sawdust, anything. This one just happens to be a solid block that my husband cut for me. So I actually um, used that. So now I want to take and determine which cup goes where. So that goes there. This piece goes over here because we want to make sure that we're not we're sewing everything correctly right um, this one here so the opposite so if it's like that that one goes there because the seam is up and this one should be over here so if you did make a mistake you can go ahead and fix it at this point so we've got those pieces here um, I'm actually going to duplicate this piece because that's not that's a really pretty piece of that lace so because the sides are not necessarily the exact same pattern on both sides. <clears throat> so that, get rid of that one. Okay. Yep, so that is here. Oh, did I just do it wrong? I do that yeah no that's right okay so now here we're gonna take and we're gonna attach this so I'm gonna fold this to here lining up my edge And so what we can do is we can stitch that down. Right, make things a little bit easier for you. We can actually do this in one step. So actually we're sandwiching this lace in between these two layers. So as long as you pin carefully, you can do this in one shot. If you're not very careful at pinning or sewing, I would do these as two completely separate steps. Okay, we have that one there. Again, always make sure that you've got left and right and you're pinning things in the right order. Okay. 
and then taking this piece and laying it right on top and then I'm doing this layer. Now I don't need to show you the sewing on this at the machine. It's going to be done the exact same way we did the other one. So start with your with a piece of fabric that you can kind of keep it from getting eaten in the machine. So go ahead and get all of this. These two pieces sewn and then we'll reconvene. Ow, ow. I'll reconvene at the machine and let you know what to do after we sew these two pieces together. So after sewing the two layers together, I pulled them both away from the lace and then I pressed it right along this edge. And that way you could get a nice crisp edge to it. And then I'm gonna take with my fingers and I wanna really try and kind of smooth it out to the outside edges from the top to the bottom. Um, and so this, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be stitching around the outside edge just to kind of secure it and keep it from shifting. Um, and when you smooth it with your fingers, it also helps kind of make sure that, hey, if you didn't cut it or sew it correctly, then you'll still, things will line up how they're supposed to be. So we don't want to force the edges to line up if they don't actually fit together um, because of your cutting. So you can see over here, it's a little bit off, but I did smooth it. Um, it's probably I just didn't sew a large enough seam allowance. Um, so then I take again, and we're gonna kind of roll this. And you can do this with the bra ham if you want. Try and line up that seam first. So kind of make sure that that, and my seam kind of did some, didn't wanna stay pressed open. You probably spend a little bit better time pressing, maybe even use a little starch to help keep that. We want to line up, make sure that those seams line up, and everything else should fit in there. So I'm just going to finish smoothing and trying to get the rest of this cup lined up on the outside edge. And it looks like actually my seams on the inside are kind of fighting each other. Let me see if that changes that. Looks like my lining over on this side was cut on the short side. Or like I said, it could have been my cutting. But we do want them to kind of lay flat. So if you do have a nice round, um, if you do have a ham, you can lay it on top of the ham and it'll help you kind of guide things around. So you want to line them up. And I'm just going to run a stitch around the outside um, at just like around an eighth of an inch. So right on the edge, um, enough to kind of keep it keep them together and we can do a basting stitch over here so here i'm just going to make my stitch as large as possible for me that is a six and depending on how your your machine is and because we're starting it inside the pattern and not on the edge it should not eat your fabric off the end. Okay. So I'll get back over to the table and finish up with the power bar. OK, 
Okay, so I'm just gonna double check that everything kind of looks good and curved. And then again, I'm gonna mark, I'm gonna line them up so I know which is right, which is left. And then we're gonna take off my pattern weight over here and deal with the power bar. Okay, so. Looks good. And then we can do one of each of these. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the lining aside for a small moment. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and we're gonna line this up over here. Now here, we do have some notches that we need to kind of look at. So if you see right here, right where this angle changes, that's where we actually wanna use that as our guide to line up to the top. So you can use that as a notch or you can just use that angle change. So I'm gonna take that angle change right there and line that up to the edge of the lace. Get that pinned. And if you do have got the other, if you've got the other notch in there, it should line up to that point right there. And then what I usually like to do is then take at the bottom. Am I doing the right side? And I'll take and kind of come down here to the bottom. Because at this point, remember that stitch I just did could actually be pulling the fabric a little bit. So I do the top a little bit up to the seam. I pin at the bottom. And then we want to try and kind of find the middle. Because these should line up well. And actually maybe I'll kind of keep that one. Because you do kind of have like a bit of a, a concave, convex thing going on right here. So we want to distribute this fabric in here, and it is likely that those stitches I just did um, pulled the seam a little bit. So we're going to try and find, we're going to ease them in so the seam lines themselves line up. Not necessarily the outside edges are the same length, but the seam lines. So you can see it, it when I first started doing it, it looked like it was going to be a lot bigger than it was. And it's really not, it looks like a little bit of ease, but all it did is just distribute that in there. Okay, so once you have that, well, then we can take, we can flip this over, and we can do this same thing by sandwiching this between the layers. Now, if this is not something that you're, you're comfortable doing or you think you're able to do, then I would definitely do this in two steps. Make sure you have some good lighting because it is hard to see the lining. And then I, again, I come down to the bottom. Pin that in place. And some of the larger cups will be a little bit easier to kind of make sure things are lining up. This one is, is for my sister. She's actually quite a bit smaller. So she's, um, this one was an easier one for me to demonstrate because it's all in the, all on the screen. I will show you some alteration stuff on a much larger cup um, when I did for myself. Okay, so let me clip that off. I'm gonna take this, fold this over, get that angled bit up to that lace. Pin in here, don't pull real tight. Remember the fabrics all have a little bit of give to them. And come down here, so you're kind of squaring that edge, squaring that end. And then kind of find the center of them. And I'm actually, I'm lining up to, so you can see where my um, lining kind of went off there. I'm not too worried about that. And it looks like I didn't quite distribute my ease. So I'm gonna come back here and redo that over here. Okay, that works now. Okay, so I've sewn that, I pinned that. 
can flip it over here so we can get the lining piece in here. Again, start at my angle. And when you're taking out the pin to, to um, pin the other piece, make sure that that fabric is not shifting at all. It can do that. So I said, if you, if you need to do this in two stitches, do this in two stitches. And sometimes also just kind of draping the curve over your hand will help you get to the edges. Okay, I'm going to stitch this. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to stitch this top part of the angle. So right here, you see this piece here? So I'm going to stitch, start stitching up here, and then I've got my lace that hits here. So I'm going to stitch quarter here, come over here and all the way down. And then I'll be back because I, I don't think I need to show that part on the machine. So I just sandwiched these pieces and I was ironing this one. And it looks like it, for the most part, it looks okay. My, my ends are a little bit off. You know, I'm, I, I'm not too worried about this. This is about as accurate I am. And then I realized I got over here and I accidentally sewed over my fabric. So I just wanted to show you that even the experts make mistakes. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix this. Um, I don't need to show you how I fix it. And then what I want you to do is when I go through, just like we kind of smoothed the other pieces of the cup out, we're gonna smooth this part of the cup out as well. Pin around the edges and then we can baste this, these outer two pieces together. So you can then baste around just right on the edge over here and down to this curve. Um, and because we have this little bit of a kind of a goof or buff, I just clip that off and there we go. And so once you finish basting this, then we're ready to test this into the band. So I have my cups finished and basted, and then I have my band kind of up to this point. Now, we don't want to completely assemble the bra because if we're going to be fitting this, we want to be able to take the cups out if we need to. So we're going to do this in kind of a slightly different order. This is not how you're going to do it for the final bra. Um, I want to actually add elastic to the back neckline on both of these. Um, and then we're going to add the strap to the back and hook it and basically pin it on the front. That way we're not having to rip out too many stitches when we, um, if we have to change out the cut. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab more of my band elastic the half an inch one. Um, and we're gonna do it with a plush side up just like we did on the band. We're gonna stitch this across with a zigzag and then fold it down with a zigzag. And it's going to fold over with the casing. It will be a little bit thick here. Um, so don't worry about that. We're gonna be inserting the wires in the front. So the, the underwire is actually not gonna be finished in the correct order as well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go sew this one on my machine zigzag this way, zigzag here, again plush side up, go around this side, come back, and then we can work on putting on the elastic piece in the back with the hook and eye, and then the last step I'm going to do is actually be putting in the cups. I'm now going to work on putting this elastic on the back strap. So when we're going to be sewing it, we're actually going to be kind of leaning it right against the edge, and we're going to be forcing it to turn in kind of a, a curve right on the edge at the strap. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna try and start at my center back, and I'm gonna do two little rows of zigzags um, right along it, so on this side and then on the inside of it. And then at the very top, we wanna leave about an inch and a half, that way we can put in the, um, the ring and flip it back to finish it. So I'm gonna go over and set up at the machine, um, so I'm gonna show you how to do this um, right at the machine. So to add this on, we need to make sure that we have a zigzag. Now this one I'm going to do in a much kind of narrower zigzag. Um, so I'm kind of going like a little bit, a little bit smaller, um, just so it's not as wide. Um, and my stitch length is fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and, and we can always start 
I really like to start sewing with my elastic, sewing on it, uh, sewing on the elastic because when something like that happens, you're uh, not kind of <laughs> having a biz big mess to start with. Okay, let's see. Okay, so get that started again. This way you also make sure that you have the stitch, the correct stitch. So I'm going to put that down, lift this up. And I'm lining this right along the edge. So I'm only controlling a little bit of time. That's not moving. And so I'm kind of trying forcing these pieces to stay straight. And actually I can come here and I can just zigzag straight across. It's not the prettiest finish, but at least you can do this on the fit sample. Okay, then we pivot again, and then we bring this back down so we can support the other side of the elastic. And you can see I did not sew a very straight line, but this is why we're doing a, a fit sample first, so you can practice. Okay, so then this is going to need to be at least an inch and a half to flip over like this. So I'm going to cut this, and no, I know you're not supposed to use these, but I am for the sake of that one. Okay, for this one, and the same thing, go ahead and I'm actually going to start it on the other side. Because I'm going to put that over here. And line it right up to the edge. Kind of force the the band curve kind of in a straight line to just follow the edge of the elastic. Okay, pivot it across. And then pivot it down. And when you actually are using your your good Your good fabric, try and use matching thread. Okay. Release that. Then we can take and we can put our ring. So kind of put a ring through this. And then we're going to bring this over. I want to bring this down probably as far as um, that neckline elastic is. Stick that in here. So if you want to really have kind of a clean finish to this elastic, um, you can actually kind of zigzag on the edge of it. So you could even do that kind of before you sew it down. For the sake of this one, I'm just going to come in here and um, stitch it down. And I'm not even going to do a. I'm just going to do a straight stitch. Um, and of course, it pulled my thread out again. Even with glasses, this is a challenge sometimes. Okay. So once I've got that there, take my pin out. And then I'm just going to do kind of a back stitch, go over it. It sounds like my bobbin's getting messed up. It is. I think my bobbin's almost out. So I now have kind of a loop on that piece. And then I can do the same thing over here. And I will sew it. And actually, this piece is really long. So I want to make sure I kind of have the same amount on both sides. From that, probably loop this down a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. Get it in. Get my. This is why I don't use my daughter's machine that much anymore. <laughs> This looks like a big giant mess with threads everywhere, but I'm getting getting closer to to where I need to be. 
So now I'm gonna work on the hook and eye. So on this piece, so we can kind of see, on the left side, we're gonna be taking our hook and eye and adding it to here. And so we can open up this and we wanna overlap it, kind of shove it inside. And you can see sometimes if it's a little high, well, we could have trimmed that down a little bit or what I like to do is I just give it a little pleat to fit in there. Um, so I like it to line up at the top and the bottom. So you can see right now it's kind of coming below. So I'm gonna force it in there. Um, now when I get this started, and I'll make sure I have a long enough thread. This I stitch down with a straight stitch. You can always go back and do um, a zigzag right on the edge. Um, but for assembling these, kind of get it in, get your needle down, line this in. And here I'm just gonna have a little tiny pleat in there um, just because I didn't trim mine down. So you can go back, do a little back stitch. And then come down here. Okay. And we're going to take the other side. And this side, the hook needs to go down. So what we do is we then flip this over and open this up. Now, the easiest way to do this is um, to offset the needle. And can I do that on this machine? I don't think I can on this machine. Um, so what I would do is if you can't offset the needle, then put on a zipper foot. And I'm gonna reverse it because it is really, really tricky to not actually hit the metal. The metal on these comes all the way out here. So you've only got about an eighth of an inch to play with. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna shove that inside Kind of inside the whole thing, line it up to the top. And this may be a little bit difficult to get started, so I'm actually. Did I pull my thread out? I almost did. Um, some machines are a little trickier, and it's like this, this side grew quite a bit. Um, I'm not going to be back stitching immediately, I just want to get this down. And what you can do is once you've kind of got this down, you can switch back to a regular needle and then just readjust where the center, that's the problem when you have a zipper foot is that it doesn't really have anything to grip on. So hopefully your machines are, are a little bit easier and can do a, um, let's see, how did that go? Oh, that is terrible, but you know, it's secured <laughs> temporarily. Um, this side did not get tacked down, so I'm actually going to run over that one more time. And so I usually use my other machine that is, um, it's an industrial, but it has it so you can offset it. And it is a much cleaner if you can actually have both sides of the foot down. So it kind of, it's secured on both sides. Um, then it's a little bit easier to manage. So I'm just going to come back in here, just so when I'm trying it on, it doesn't rip. And this is not our final bra, so this can look as messy as you want. And this is where you can really kind of perfect your skills and see what's the best method. This is acceptable for a fit sample. So then what you kind of do is we make sure that you've sewn them in the right direction so you can hook them just like that. Okay. I'm gonna go back to the table so I can show you how to assemble the rest of the strap and then we can get the um, cup in. Now to assemble the other half of the strap, grab your elastic, and sorry, this is just one I have laying around because I didn't bring any more of the white home. And we're gonna cut two lengths, oop, I don't need that right there, two lengths of, let's say 16 inches. So. So now this piece, we actually want to, 
we need to put this hook on or this slide on. So what we're going to do, we're going to slide this through with the shiny side up through there. So we have that piece where So again, shiny side up, slide it through the slide. And then we can take and fold this down. And then we need to stitch this closed. So we'll be sewing this, stitching that down. So I'm gonna go do that. Um, I don't need to do that on camera. I'll just do a quick little back stitch right there and I'll be right back so we can finish assembling the strap. Okay, now we have our slide attached to the strap. Now this way, what we're gonna do next, and I always end up doing this twice because I never do it and knew it, do it correctly. I believe, because <laughs> I have done this a ton of times in the last few days. Okay, we're gonna have the back side of the elastic. So I'm looking at the front side of the bra, looking at the back side of the strap, I'm gonna put it through the ring from the back. I'm gonna come up and go through one side of the slide and go back through the other side of the slide. And there we have our adjustable strap. Okay, do that again. So the back side of the strap, come through the back side of the ring. We come up through the slide back through the slide. Okay, so now the band is pretty much ready for us to assemble the cups. So because we have put this casing in, we're gonna just have to be really careful that we, um, that we don't sew onto the case. We really just wanna sew right on the edge. So this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but it doesn't have to be pretty. And when you actually sew it on here, I want you to sew it with a basting stitch. Okay, so now we're gonna make sure that we got the right sides on the right side so we don't sew the cups into the wrong way. Okay, so because we have not turned down, we have not finished the front, and we have finished here, but this is not finished, things are gonna line up a little bit differently. So we're gonna have this side, so the um, underarm is actually gonna extend kind of, if you can kind of look to see where your fabric actually turned down from when you did the elastic, that's as far as you want it to kind of extend up past. So let me get one right at the end. So I have mine extending by about a quarter of an inch because that's kind of where I finished my elastic. This over here is supposed to finish kind of right below. So I'm actually gonna start this a quarter of an inch below at the center front. Okay, so I went ahead and I just got the front and the side pinned. And then I'm just gonna work on kind of working my way through it. So this should, you can actually kind of take from one end to the other and line them up. You may have to go back and ease something back in. But what I do is I start on one end come back over here. So I'm really kind of going back and forth. So it's kind of an equal, so I'm not kind of easing at all and then there'd be so much left over at the front. So this way, when I come in, if I have to go back and ease anything. So now I'm gonna come back here on the bottom. Just gonna find on the bottom, oh, there we go. And then we're gonna check. So, it's, so it looks like this is a little tight here, so I'm gonna take that and kind of distribute the, um, kind of distribute it so there's no puckers Can't pin. between those two pins, which means I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. That way it's more evenly distributed through the bottom of the cup. Okay, so there's that cup. Then I'm gonna come over here again. So remember I'm gonna, because this is just fitting, I'm gonna line this up a quarter of an inch from the top. So that's about, um, six millimeters from the top. This side, I'm gonna extend the underarm just past the elastic by about a quarter of an inch. Pin that in, come back over here. 
And you'll do kind of the same, pretty much the exact same thing. Oops, looks like I didn't get all the lining tacked it down. But that's why this was a fit sample. Okay, so we get this one over here. Come back over to this side. Okay, now I'm finding the middle. So I've got the middle. And then there's to distribute that ease, I'm going to take that pin out and reline them up. Take that pin out and reline them up. Now I'm not going to show you this um, sewing it in on the camera just because you're not, there's really no special technique to doing it. I do it on the side that the casing is so that way I can try and get as close and I can make sure that the, the casing itself doesn't kind of slide in the, um, the teeth like on the bottom of the, um, the foot. So I'm gonna try and get as close as I can right next to that casing and stitch all the way around. I'm not gonna do a back stitch on either one, but I am gonna do a basting stitch. Um, and the reason why is that we wanna make it easy enough to take out in case we need to make an adjustment. So I'm gonna go ahead and baste those two cups in, and then we are almost ready to do our fit. Okay, I've got my cups in. They look pretty good, I don't have any pleats. Um, you likely may have a pleat the first time you sew it in, so you can always go in and seam rip just a little bit. So now we're going to kind of finish up your, you know, finish up this sample so we can actually test the fit. So the wires go in with the colored tip towards the center front. Most of the time, most manufacturers do this. On occasion, I've seen some that have the color tip to the outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the non-colored tip and I'm going to put it in at the center front. You slide that all the way into the casing and push it down as far as I can so it comes over here. And then get that in. What I would like to discuss is the spacing between the breast. So the spacing of the wires at the center front um, could be a very crucial part of the fit. The pattern on its own gives spacing so the two pieces of channeling can sit right next to each other, just like this. So it's about a three quarter of an inch width at that center front. Now, not everybody has that same type of spacing. So if you were to take and kind of just support your breast and take a pencil, so you just kind of hold your breast up, so you can't really see, I'll hold my breast up, and then you take a pencil and you kind of slide it between. Um, if that pencil is sitting against your rib cage and there is no room left and right before you hit breast tissue, then we actually want to adjust this so the casing is right on top of each other because we want to make sure that the wires don't really sit on the breast tissue, but we want them to sit between the breast. So the closest we can get them is you know, right here at that bridge on top of each other. Now, if you don't even have room for a pencil, well, that is a slightly different fit problem and you'd probably end up needing to go with a demi wire, so something that is shorter, but this video is not about that. Um, this is really just about trying to figure out the spacing that we have between our breasts. So if you have a pencil spacing or about a one finger spacing um, between your breast, um, you're gonna use, you're gonna overlap your casing right here at the top so the casing at the top is on top of each other and then we're going to base we're going to stitch that down at the top just to secure it and it doesn't have to be a very it needs to be able to hold the whole bra together um, but anticipate that you may have to take it out um, so you know be careful with this um, so you want to stitch here now if you can fit let's say two fingers between the breast um, then you've got that good three quarter inch spacing. Or maybe that's more a little bit more like a finger. <laughs> it's so my fingers seem very, very fat compared to this. Um, but if you have no spacing, you put it on top of each other. If you have some spacing, you can put it here. And if you actually have a really wide set spacing, you can set it so it could be as far, I've seen as far apart as an inch and a half at that bridge. So this is really where you kind of, um, when you put the wire up, and actually what you could even do at this point, is actually put the different sides right up to your body. So you've got them assembled up to the body and figure out how close at the bridge do they need to be. And so this can really be your first fitting. So you're not putting this whole thing on yet, you're just kind of putting this in 
um, on the breast root, and then we're gonna try and see how close we need that bridge to be. So for my sister, I know that she has kind of average space, so I'm just gonna fold down one side of this bridge, kind of right, right in the middle, um, right at the edge of the um, casing. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna line it up so the casing edges butt up against each other. Now this is gonna be the average spacing. For larger breasts, you may end up having to do what's on top of each other. And I wanna show you just briefly, now I've already dissected and butchered this bra. This is one that I did for myself because I was actually testing a new band um, and I wanted to make sure that things fit. So I've already kind of pulled off and recycled everything off this bra that I was able to, um, but you can see where I have it tacked down. Um, so I am really close together, so I actually had to tack mine down on top of each other. Now the reason we do this is because sometimes the rib cage, doesn't matter how big we are, but sometimes um, our rib cages may flare. So we have a real tiny um, underbust, but even within a half an inch to an inch below the underbust, it starts to flare out. And when that happens, what we can do is we can put this on. Once we tack this down, then you can actually put this on and kind of play around and see where it fits on the body. And then you may be pulling it tighter like here, or you may be opening it up like this because some people's ribs flare that much that they may actually need to have more room at the rib cage. So this little hack that we're doing just shows you and gives you the opportunity to adjust this. And then once you have figured this out, then we can come in here and you know tack, stitch this down. And then you can compare onto the pattern you know, you wanna see, okay, well, this is definitely, it's gonna be a little bit wider. Probably if I kept it like this, it'd probably be about a quarter of an inch wider at here. Um, so ideally you have them so they're absolutely in the center. Um, it's gonna be a little bit harder to try and do that when you're on your person. Um, but this way you can adjust this and see how this fits on the body. And then once you have that, I'd probably just take a safety pin with you and safety pin kind of where this ends up and then at least tack, stitch it down on that center front for the fit so you can really see how the whole band fits. Um, because a bra fit doesn't just have to do with the cups, it has to also do with the band. So you wanna make sure that the band is fitting you comfortably. Now sometimes when you have to open that up at the bottom, it can mean that you have to take it in at the top. Um, but this is where you'll be able to figure that out and this is why we assembled this in the different pieces so you can attack and tackle each bit of the fit a little bit differently. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna tack this down, and what I'm gonna do over here is I am going to, well, I'm gonna just take a safety pin and pin this on here. So I'm gonna take a safety pin and pin this just on here, just kind of keep it in place. And just one last stitch you have to rip out if you have to rip out any stitches. and you have pretty much done your test fit. Now I'm gonna actually change cameras and I'm gonna fit this on my dress form. Now know that a dress form is not a person. Um, I made this for my sister. So my sister's gonna come over this afternoon and I'm actually gonna do an actual fit on her. She may not let me film her, but I will try and take pictures so I can show, at least in um, the fitting, how and where I may need to do some adjustments. Okay, so I've gone down and I've tacked that bridge. So I'm gonna set this on her. Let's see that. Obviously, this bra is not made for her, and I didn't measure this for her, so this one's going to be a little bit tighter on the ribs um, than what this is for my sister. Okay, so we have our straps. Oops, I sewed that one backwards. So what we can do here is, well obviously, um, because this bra is just, it's a little bit too small for this dress form. Um, let's see, I'm gonna loosen that up a little bit and just pin it so I can fake it. So she is about a 34 and my sister is a 30. So 
move that out, give a little bit more room there. And then what we can do is you can really kind of tug and see where this will lay flat on the rib cage. And you can try and fold this down so you kind of got it equally when you're on your body, but I know it's not as doable. So we want to get the bridge so it sits nice. Obviously don't stick pins in yourself because it'll hurt. Um, make sure that the wire fits nicely around the breast. And here we can adjust. Okay, let's loosen that strap a little bit. So once you have this on, there's several different places of fit that you want to assess. First, we made sure that the, the bottom of the band is going to work right. Now we need to look at the top on the side. Now, sometimes because if we open up the bottom, we end up having to take a little bit on the top. So pay attention and see how much you would need to do. Now don't just pinch one side because if you only pinch one side and then it fits great, um, you, can't, you don't really want to double that. So make sure if you do it on one side, you do it on the other. So you pretty much want to try and get an equal amount on each side so your bands are as symmetrical as you can make them. So I'm going to, so I'm pinching out a little bit on the top. Now you, this may happen if you, if your rib cage is a little bit more cylindrical. That means your upper bust is closer in measurement to your under bust. Um, you may actually need to take in on the side. So now looking her, looking at her, um, we can see that obviously this cup is not really designed for her. Um, so we have a little bit of emptiness in here. So if you have a little bit of emptiness, or even let's say you fill out the bottom. And then you have a little emptiness in the top cup. Well, what you probably want to do is we probably want to go down a cup size because what's going to happen is when we remove volume down here, it's going to help displace the tissue more into the top cup. So what we can do to figure that out is basically take kind of right around the apex, see how much we need to pinch, kind of just pinch out. Obviously use safety pins, not pins, unless you can you trust yourself. And you figure out exactly how much you can pin out. So on the sit for, for this one, I'm going to take and I'm going to measure what I'm pinching out and then I notice across the bus and that should be pretty good. Um, here I've got about a quarter of an inch. Well, a total cup size change is about a half an inch. So for her, I would go down one size. Um, but you do want to try this on a real person. Um, like I said, if this fits fine and then you have this empty up here, you want to go down and, and try actually pinning it out um, on the cup itself, so it could just take some safety pins or go in and hand baste it. Um, and you might want to do that off of you, especially if your breasts are a little bit heavy. Then you can take it off, um, pinch out and, and maybe hand baste a little bit, put it back on and see if that helps you fill the top cup out better. Um, and if it does, then that just means that, okay, we need to go down um, a cup size, um, depending on how much you're able to pinch out and how much it's able to displace. And that's really how you want to kind of fit your cups. Um, for those of you that may be asymmetrical, well, I'm going to have another little um, video I'm doing because myself, I am asymmetrical by an, about an inch and a half from one side to the other. So I will do that in another short video, but this was your test fit. Um, hopefully you learned a few things in construction while you're doing this. Um, and once you have figured out exactly what you need to do for your fit, then you can start working on the real pretty one or stay tuned for that tutorial. It'll be available on the International Bra Sewing Bee this year, um, and it'll also be available to Cashmere at Club members.